Hello and welcome to Fully Charged. Now this is a little bit of an update about the Tesla power wall and the solar panels that I have in my house. Now we did a program about this a while ago, it's been very popular and it's really worth, uh, I've been waiting to do an update when there's something is changed and we know more about it. Okay, so this is going to be as quick an explanation as I can possibly do because it is a bit complicated. I drive a, a Tesla Model 3, as you know, before that I had a Tesla Model S. That means that you have a referral code and if people use your referral code when they buy a Tesla, or lease a Tesla, they get a reduction on the cost of that. And in return, Tesla give me, or whoever owns the Tesla, certain benefits. They don't give you money. Tesla don't give anyone money. Uh, you get things like free supercharging or uh, free autopilot update to your car or, you know, the different things like that. And eventually, I, uh, through my referral code, enough people bought Teslas that Tesla rang up about a year and a half ago to tell me I've got a, a power wall for free. So I was really thrilled. I ring up the, uh, the installers who did all my wiring and did the solar panels and the original power wall, Joju Solar. And I said, I've got a free power wall. Can I put it in? And they said, yeah. And then, uh, then Western Power Distributors got in touch. So that's the people who distribute the electricity in the local grid around this area. And they said, you can't do that. The, the only way I could do it was to have a three phase upgrade to install three phase, which is what you would have generally in an industrial unit, not in a house. Although lots of houses are being built now with three phase already connected. And in other European countries, people have three phase as normal. Anyway, it's quite unusual in this country. So I went, fine, let's do three phase. Oh my God, it's gonna cost a fortune. It was not cheap. Uh, but that will explain the previous episode we did about the JCB electric digger. That's why I had to dig a trench to lay in the cable so that we could have three phase connected to the house. It was a new cable that was installed. Uh, eventually it was connected and now it's been switched on for the first time and thank goodness it works. So we've got lights in the house, we've got three phases coming in, we've got new charges, all sorts of other things, which I'll explain later on. So that's how I got to this point. So yes, I was given a free battery by Tesla, but my goodness, that was the most expensive free gift I've ever been given. So Chris, it's been a while since we both stood in this garage talking about my original Powerwall, which is, has been brilliant. It hasn't gone, hasn't gone wrong. It's done what it's meant to do, which is very encouraging. But I just, for a start, I want to thank you for working out how on earth to do all this, because this is an absolute monster. It's turned into a monster project, doesn't it? What happens when we look to do a, a, a Tesla Powerwall installation is that we'll make an application uh, to the local grid operator to see if the network is up to, up to hosting right. this new equipment. And 99 times out of 100, the answer is yes, absolutely right. fine. Right. <laughs> in <laughs> your me, case, <laughs> you are the one in 100 uh, where yeah. actually some kind of reinforcement was required in order to, right. in order to host all of yeah. this. But I think it's up to 11 kilowatts of solar I can now install because the system can now deal with that kind of power, which is really good yeah and that's the advantage to of upgrading the supply into the property right. uh, to be able to take more power the other important change that's taken place there is that your original supply was what's called a, a single phase supply which essentially means that there's you know one wire running right. in into the property you're now on a three phase supply which essentially put three three live right. wires that obviously increases the capacity uh, of what, of what right. you can do right. because the, with the zappy charger that's now a 22 kilowatt charger which is no way you could have that in a on a single phase exactly and yeah. so the the three phase supply that you've got coming in has also allowed you to upgrade the right. electric vehicle charger the zappy charger uh, up to a three-phase device, which right. will allow you to charge your, you know, the cars right. even faster, faster than you could before. So I just want to mention that the Tesla, this is called the, the, the Signature Powerwall. Uh, and that's what it's called. And on the, on the Tesla website, it's signed by Elon Musk. He doesn't like me. He's not done it, has he? No, it's personal, I think. I'm taking it as a personal affront. He didn't want to sign mine. But then, so what we've got now in total storage then is somewhere around... 26 kilowatt hours, is that right? So 13, are they 13? Yep, so they're 13.4 they're kilowatt hours right. each, so you're now up to 26.8 kilowatt right. hours uh, of, of storage capacity. Uh, and I think it's worth um, relating that, I suppose, to the, the size of the solar PV right. uh, system that you have here. So you've got a five and a half uh, kilowatt solar PV system. Yeah. In the middle of summer, on our average, 
um, that would be producing about 27 and a half kilowatt hours per day. So I've had a lot of yep. mid 30s. Yep. Last and, year and, in particular. And certainly on a sunny yeah. day, you would have you're, you're beyond here. that. But yeah. the average sun, summer day would completely, completely fill, fill both, both of right. them. I think here now we're talking well, November time, yeah. uh, middle of winter. I think the solar is probably only going to produce enough to, to sort of half fill yeah. one power wall, yeah. yeah. uh, and that's really to do with the you know seasonal variability of yeah. solar in in the UK. Obviously, some of your viewers in America and Australia yeah. are going to have a lot lot more so even unfair. supply. Yeah. The way we've sort of designed this system is essentially to to tear up um, where the solar should should yeah. go. So. When you're producing solar, the first place it goes is into the Tesla Powerwall, yeah. and it fills those up. Once they're completely full, then any excess will go into the Zappi yeah. car charger, uh, and then directly into your car. Yeah. And then if the Zappi is not plugged in, uh, or if the car is full, then any excess solar, instead of going back to the grid, is actually dumped into your hot water yeah. tank through uh, through what's called an, an eddy device, right. um, also made by you know, the same people that make Zappi, yeah. um, and, and sort of working in, in very much the same way. So what you're really ensuring there is that of all the solar that you generate, you know, you're not you're, wasting you're anyway, you're really not spilling anything back to the, to, to the grid at all, and you're getting the, the most usage you possibly can out of the solar that you've got on your roof. Because I mean, I think it's worth pointing out that it, it's quite an unusual thing in the UK to have three-phase connection to a house. If you look at the wires running down the street, they are they are three phases. Right. Right. If you go to somewhere like Germany, they will tap off all three phases into every into single home. Right. Whereas in the UK, we just you know pick one at random and, right. and wire it into a house. Right. Uh, and so it will go you know phase one on this house, phase two on the next right, house, I and see. so on down right. the street. There's certainly a lot of talk about new build houses now having three phases standard. I mean, I've certainly been reading things about that, that it's going to become more common here. Yeah, I think it's likely to become more common. And I think, you know, certainly the desire to, to charge electric vehicles yeah. quickly um, is, is probably going to drive more three phase supplies yeah. going into, into new build properties uh, in, in, in coming years. Yeah. Um, for existing properties, obviously, you know, they function just fine on, yes. on, on single phase. Yeah. So I don't, don't want your viewers to think, no. oh, I've got I've got have to three phases, because you know, that's just not a normal thing. No, <laughs> that is not normal. So yeah, so I mean, you certainly can have, a, well, like we did for three years, a power wall on a single phase lot with solar. The big difference, I think, which is what a lot of people asked about when we did the first episode is, what happens if there's a power cut and you've got a full battery? And the answer then was, you can't do anything. You know, we, and we've experienced that. In the time we've had that battery, we've probably had two or three power cuts and we have no power, and yet I know the battery has maybe got 10, 12 kilowatt hours of juice in it, but we can't use it, so now we can. Yep, so I think, I think that's something that, that Tesla realized is that, and, and it certainly came up very clearly on you know, the comments section yeah. of the last video that yeah. we did with you, was you've got a full battery in your house in, in and you can't discharge yeah. it and it's a power cut. That's kind of nuts. Yeah. The idea that you would put in a device to ride through a power cut yeah. when in the UK we get maybe five minutes of power cuts a year. Yeah, it's, not, think, it's not a big well, thing Well, that here. doesn't make sense. Yeah. But if you've got a battery yes. in your house that you're using and, uh, to store solar, then well, why, why, why wouldn't you yeah. incorporate that functionality yeah. to allow you to ride through, through a yeah. power cut as, as well? What Tesla have now done is they've brought out what's called the backup gateway, which is a device that does allow you to run and off your batteries when there is a power cut. Right. Now, the reason behind that is, is again to do with the electrical regulations uh, within the UK. Broadly, what the grid would say is, if there is a power cut on the grid, our guys need to go and work on those wires. Yeah. And we can't have people's solar panels and people's batteries in their homes potentially making that grid live while, while right. people are, are working on it. Most solar householders will, will know this, that when there's a power cut, their solar inverter will turn Just off. Turns off yeah. And historically, you know, the batteries would also have to, to right. turn off as well. The way that they get around this is the, the backup gateway uh, and that is constantly monitoring the voltage on the grid and right. if it detects that that drops out of range or drops to zero then there is a relay in there that physically disconnects the whole house from the grid right and once you've got that physical disconnection of your property yeah. from anything that's going on out out grid side then you are allowed to run off these batteries right. uh, behind that switch
So, Mark, now you're the genius who's actually put this system in. I've been watching you with enormous admiration because I don't know how you've managed to work it all out because it's pretty complicated, and, but I'm really impressed with what you've done. But what we're going to try and do now is, is actually test out the, what happens when there's a power cut. Exactly that. Yeah. So hopefully we'll disconnect this switch here. Yeah. We'll simulate that, that we're going to lose the connection from the grid. And then hopefully behind us here, we'll see the lights. They may flicker, they right. may not. Um, hopefully they will obviously remain lit remain and then lit. Uh, it will be on back up. So we're going to try it out now. Here we go. Quite nervous. And off. Takes a few seconds. Right. We can hear the switch clicking in. It's clicking in. And in we go. We should start to operate in a second. We've got a flash Let's then. See a flicker. There. And we're on. <laughs> We have backup from our right. Tesla backup. So it, it, it's quite interesting because that's the first time I've seen it. So it is, it does go, it effectively, uh, we would probably lose the lights for a couple of seconds Correct. in the house. Yeah. But then it would all come back on. That's right. So now we're running off the batteries. Solely off the batteries. Wow. That is amazing, isn't it? That is amazing. Wow. I think I had in my mind, you know, oh, you have to have a backup gateway. And I imagined it would be this size, like the, the hub. It would be this tiny little switch in the fuse box. I didn't realise it was, it's quite a big chunky thing. It's quite a big chunky thing. I think yeah. they've done something very cute there by, yeah. by making it look like a, a, a mini power wall. Yeah. But obviously you have to take, you know, the whole electricity supply through your house, through here, through in there. and out again, right. and, 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 and through that switch. Right. So there is some, you know, quite hefty, uh, electronics within yeah. within the gateway, as well as all the sort of smart control and, and operation of the batteries right. uh, that, that it does as well. You can set um, the Tesla Powerwalls to charge up with cheap nighttime electricity. Right. So if you're on a tariff where you pay more in the day than, than you do uh, yeah. at night, which is very, very common for electric vehicle owners, yeah. then you can top up your batteries with cheap nighttime electricity. Right. Obviously you don't want to fill your battery no. up with cheap nighttime electricity because you won't be able to get the next day's solar in. Yeah. So what the gateway does is it actually makes a prediction of how much solar it is expecting oh, to put look, in tomorrow. Oh I didn't know that, wow. And tops oh. up the rest right. with the cheap nighttime yes. electricity, leaving enough space for what it for expects what it, to come along wow. tomorrow. That is um, cleverer than I, than me. Yeah, so um, <laughs> obviously it's not, it's not super accurate, it's not right. taking in a weather forecast, for example, right. but it can um, essentially monitor what it is doing roughly at that time right. of year um, to get to a pretty good approximation. Right. So it's a big step up then, that. it's, not just a, it's not just a big switch that means I can have a electricity and power cut, it's much more intelligent than that. Yeah, so th that's really less to do with the gateway and actually more to do with the, the, the firmware, the, right. the software that the, the gateway is running. So any, anyone with an existing gateway can, you know, set their, their power right. to run in that mode. Right. Once I understood how to use it, once I was used to using the software, that my aim was to never use grid power between four o'clock and eight o'clock at night, mm -hmm. you know, to manage it so that even in the winter, I charge these now with off-peak electricity in the night, so I think they switch about uh, half past midnight, they, they charge. But what that means is even in the middle of winter when there's minimal solar, I then try and run the house as much as I can off that, but manage it so that we definitely don't use it at the, at the peak time, which is when electricity is the most expensive and the dirtiest. Yeah, so and that's the... been an amazing uh, feeling to do that, you know, and that will be easier to do because that's my argument is... is you know, I'm definitely in a privileged position at the moment to be able to afford to have those and to be able to afford to put this in. But the, the, as the prices come down, you know, and, and more people have batteries, you know, it is that it's, it's a simple argument. If there were 20 million homes with even a four kilowatt hour battery, quite a small one, no solar, but they charge them off peak and they use them at the peak, that peak goes down. You know, it's, that's as simple as that. You're leveling out those ridiculous highs and lows which is and that's that when you realize that that top peak is the dirtiest and most ele expensive electricity we produce it really makes sense in a big way and in fact as we discussed on many times we don't get that many power cuts but when you do get one if this is the result it's brilliant absolutely yeah. and if you've got solar pv then uh yeah, yeah why not When the feed-in tariffs were in place, you were paid the feed-in tariff for what you generated. Yeah. So any unit of electricity that you generated, you, you got paid for. Even if you used it yourself even and if have you to boil a cup. Even if you used it yourself. Yeah. 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 
anything that was exported back to the grid, you got paid five pence per kilowatt hour for, you know, right. as, a, as a flat rate. Um, and in most cases, you know, it wasn't even measured. They just said, well, half your electricity is going back to the grid. Right. Uh, and you get, you get 5p for right. that. Since the removal of the feed-in tariff, that export payment has, has also disappeared and, and is going to be replaced with something called the Smart, en Smart Export, export Guarantee, guarantee. Yeah. <laughs> um, which will be coming in place um, 1st of January. And that basically says that different electricity suppliers can offer you different export tariffs. Right. And the idea is to sort of create a market between electricity suppliers to take any excess solar that you might right. spill back to the grid. Right. So it's a bit more complicated than just giving everyone a, a flat 5p. Yes. You're actually going to have to shop around and try and find the best deal you can right. for right. the electricity that you export. Right. Uh, you will also need a, a smart meter to be installed yeah. to actually measure uh, that exported electricity accurately. Right. But then there's the then there's a variable one which follows the wholesale electricity price because that was the thing I always remember that when I first realised that electricity did, didn't always cost the same the wholesale price yep. you know the, the, and the variations in that go from effectively sometimes negative to yep. really high and so if you can sell electricity at the peak <laughs> yeah particularly if you can buy it when it's cheap I think that's perhaps where we're we're, we're edging towards so. I think the majority of suppliers under the smart export guarantee are going to be offering a flat rate, yeah. but I think you will see uh, some of the smaller players doing interesting things around time of day pricing. Yeah. Uh, we're beginning to see you know, people charging different prices at different times of day yeah. for, for importing electricity, and we'll probably also see them uh, do, doing the same for, for exporting yeah. electricity. So now on the system we've got now, if it, say this happened in the middle of a sunny day in the summer and you had a power cut, would we still be getting? Would the inverter still be running? So we'd still be able to take the solar in to. Absolutely. Right. So the inverter would operate also. Right. Um, so the battery would, uh, it would obviously, use up a certain amount of energy, yeah. um, and then once it's got to about thirty percent and the battery, the inverter would then kick in. I see. All oh, right. So then it would start to either recharge the battery or run the house. That's right. Yeah. Correct. I think that's really the next stage for you know, domestic battery evolution, if you like. At the moment, they're there to allow householders to capture their own solar and use it for themselves. Yeah. The next stage will be for householders to capture the solar and use it for the benefit of, of the wider grid. Yeah. Um, and that's only going to be facilitated by having these smart tariffs in place. What people will find difficult is, I think, that you know, the idea that they might get paid 5 or 6p for the electricity that they put out to the grid, but they know that they buy in again at, at, at 15 at 15 pence. or 20, yeah. And people will be looking at that and going, yeah. well, why is, why is there that difference? Yeah. Um, the answer to that is, is that, you know, the 5, 6p is, is the, the value of the electricity itself. Um, the value of the electricity is it might be produced by a gas-fired yeah. power station or an offshore wind turbine or so forth. And the rest of your bill is things like paying for the national grid yeah. infrastructure. Yeah, the substations, um, the wires, the pylons. Paying for the metering, paying for the billing, and obviously the utility profits in there, uh, plus any sorts of green legislation. So at the yeah. moment, we're seeing all of those costs bundled onto your import price yeah. But obviously, you don't you don't get that you don't when get you that back yes. when you export to yeah. the grid. Yeah. So you know that price differential between um, the price you pay for electricity to import it versus the price you get uh, to export it. You know that is where the real value of the battery uh, comes in. So that's all we've got time for for this episode of Fully Charged. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned how this technology is developing, how it's, you know, it's still expensive. It's still being developed. But, you know, the, the Tesla gateway, uh, the backup gateway has only been out since April. This is very new stuff. And all I've got to do really now is make sure that my signature power wall, which is what I was told, signature with that word in the title, 
it's going to have a signature. So thank you very much for, for watching. Um, please do subscribe to Fully Charged. Uh, it, about 75% of the people who watch Fully Charged aren't subscribed, which is brilliant because a lot of people watch it. But you could subscribe, then you won't miss any of our juicy, lumpy, organic goodness that we produce all the time. Uh, please do have a look at the Patreon link that is beneath this uh, video. Let me assure you that the money that we receive from Patreon is not going towards paying for Robert's power wall. That's not happening. Um, and please do join us again. And as always, if you have been, thank you for watching. Right, that's it. This is how he signs it. Look at that. That's it. Signature power wall. Nice.